Another cool performance enhancement just on the side of the process engine. Um, as you can remember pretty often tasks which are just running in the system, provisioning tasks in the job queue are blocking operations in the DB queue. That means the calculation is waiting until provisioning it's done. In some cases, this is pretty sensible, especially if these jobs are doing something in the database that should be considered with the calculation. In other cases, for example, sending out emails or something else, this is not really necessary. And because of that, there is a new behavior implemented and this new behavior allows now to set a flag on the process step level, which tell the system that this specific process step should not block something in the DBQ. At the end, there is a table QBM element affected by a job and entries in this table are just responsible for DBQ weightings. And additionally with that, a set of tasks is shipped with the new flag set. That means, for example, send mail jobs will not generate entries in that specific table. And because of that, the DBQ will not hold and wait until these jobs are provisioned. And to make that visible, I'm just looking in designer. You can see that I just opened one of my processes. In that specific process, I selected just one job. And as you can see, there is a new flag, no DBQ wait, which is the flag we are talking about. That specific flag typically gets inherited from job tasks. So if I, for example, look in object browser, you can see this flag exists three times in the database in job. That was the picture in designer in job tasks and at the end in job queue. If I look into job, then you can see two things. First of all, there's a template configured and that template takes that specific flag from the job task. That means specific job tasks like mail sending jobs, for example, take the information from there. Additionally to that, um, it is just set only, as you can see here, uh, if the object gets newly created. That means later on you can then change it and it will never be changed back. Last but not least, if that flag is set and configured, then it gets automatically inserted into the job queue if this is part of the defined job. And from there, it is then responsible to be used in that specific table QBM element affected by job. A couple of improvements we saw with our mail component. The mail component itself was shipped with some parameters and these parameters was able to enable SSL or star TLS or something like that. There is now a new parameter just implemented. That parameter it sent transport security and it could be used to configure the protocol. All the other parameters are obsolete and gone. Additionally to that, uh, first time the send rich mail components allow to export the email in all data formats, which you know from the rest of the mail components. So that means there is a PDF, an HTML, a CSV or an, X, an, an Excel data format available. And this is now as well available during send rich mails out. Last but not least, the developers decided to improve as well the authentication error logging in a way that if something works not well, just sending that email out, we get a better error message in the log so that we can easier find out the problem already exists by sending emails out. Remember, there are many parameters you have to set. If one of them is not correct, then you are running trouble. Now this logging should help you a little bit more detailed to tell you what exactly should be reconfigured. Our wonderful well-known handle object component was as well upgraded. Please remember the handle object component is there to let the database know that some data in the database have to be changed and that have to be changed using the process engine of the identity manager to include into that update the complete functionality of the API. Two more changes on the handle object component. The first change is there's a new parameter proc ID, which automatically then by passes through the PROC ID if you like to do so. This was possible as well in the past, but in the past it was necessary to take one of these optional parameters and to configure that optional parameter in a way that it was named PROC ID and then to fill the PROC ID into. This is now not necessary anymore. There is now a standard parameter PROC ID. The only thing you have to do is to ensure that the PROC ID gets passed through. Secondly, 
there is a new option on the delete component of handle object. You can now configure the deep parameter, which automatically will lead to a deep delete in the object model. Please remember in the object model, there is a standard delete and there is the deep delete functionality. The deep delete functionality is as well deleting referenced objects. So it is now possible to trigger this deep delete functionality with the help of an handle object, which was not possible before. From my perspective, a great improvement. On the file component side, in the past when we was just setting permissions, we used more or less on the Windows side something which is called CALS or ICALS. This is one of these standard tools. Much better and I like to say easier to use is uh, to modify permissions. Therefore, new tasks was built on the file component. There is now an add file access and a delete file access just to add and to delete single file access parts out of the permission set. And there is as well an add path access and a delete path access, which is doing that similar uh, with all the permissions set to a specific folder and all the inheritance included. 